Hi, my name is Srihan Lynch and I'm a senior lecturer in initial teacher education at the University of East London. This video is going to be a little bit about my use of Microsoft Office and the programmes that I've been using whilst working at the University of East London. To tell you a little bit about our programme, firstly, to start with, my role is working with student teachers and my specialism is physical education. So our students begin um, for us in physical education at the very beginning of September and they're with us all day, every day, um, whether that be eight till four or nine to five, Monday to Friday for around the first three to four weeks of the course and then they come back to campus every Monday and the rest of the time they're in schools on placement and I go out and visit them in school. So it's really important um, that we have a platform that we can constantly communicate and that's really easy for students to use um, and user friendly and I think that Microsoft Teams especially uh, is very useful for that. Uh, I've been using Microsoft Teams and, and these programs for around a year now. So I'm very fortunate that when COVID happened um, and we went online as a university, actually my students already knew how to use this platform and it wasn't something new for them to learn to get to grips with. Since COVID and being um, not out in schools visiting my students, I decided to do some formal training around it. And I started by doing the Microsoft Innovation Educator Certificate. And that was a few courses really just around um, how to use the Microsoft programs, for example, Teams and OneNote. After that, because my role is in teacher education and I'm training teachers and they could be expected to use it in schools themselves, I decided to do the Microsoft Educator Training Academy, which was far more robust um, and gave me a real overview actually on how to teach using these platforms myself. And I think that's been quite helpful and expanded my knowledge in how to use the programmes to the best of their ability. And it's a little bit more than the Innovator Educator Certificate because you learn about far more programmes and how to use them. Now, I'll admit that the training took me much longer than it would probably take somebody because what I did at the same time was I set up um, all of my Microsoft Teams and my OneNotes and my, my portfolio for the next academic year whilst doing the training. Um, but if you wanted to fly through that program, it would be really easy for you to do. So to begin with, I wanted to show you how I'm using Teams. And this is my Microsoft team that I'm using this year. And I'm posting things for my students that could be helpful. They might like them um, or, or love them. So I've sent some students some praise here for doing a TikTok that they did the other day, um, which I'll show you a little bit later on. It's a great place, Teams, to drop some files. Um, I've also set um, draft assignments for students to send me so I can just look at everything in one place rather than go from platform to platform. I find it really easy to mark assignments here um, and, and send it back. Um, although I always stress to students that they must do the final, the final um, what part of their assignment has to be done through Moodle and the Turnitin. Soon we'll be able to do it all here so I can go to my marked assignments and see that they've handed in draft assignments um, and it, it's, it alerts the students as soon as you've marked it and they get a notification and you can do track changes and things like that. Um, there's a great tab up here where I set tasks, I can share documents, 
Polly I use to do quick surveys with students, asking them about what they want or how to move forward. And I've also integrated another Microsoft app here called Flipgrid. And I really love Flipgrid, especially for online learning. Um, you'll be able to see here, here's my cohort. There's us doing some fun yoga earlier on. Um, and so this week they've had seven topics um, that they're able to upload a Flipgrid. Flipgrid is a space where um, they can record a video, listen maybe to a podcast before, read some literature before, um, and then they record a video telling me what they've learnt or to stimulate discussion with other, other students. So, so far, um, one person's responded to this. If I wanted to, I could click on here. Um, my students did a TikTok the other day. That was quite fun. Um, we did here how to put the E back in PE. Um, so I'll put here some suggested listening for them um, and then a couple of responses there. Um, last week they did my wish for the PE world um, and you can see here that all of my students responded. I have 18 students and we have a shared learning time of 10 and a half, uh, 10.3 hours. And they're really, really, really inventive with these videos. To, so to just show you one very Here's one of my students. And they're sharing their wish about the PE world and it's already had 74 views, which is quite amazing actually. So this next one is just really how I use OneNote. I use OneNote myself personally um, all the time to write all of my notes and my to-do lists. But here's my OneNote for my students for next year. So I've already created their shared spaces, which are these are their seminar groups. They they name them themselves, but until they arrive, I just call them group A to D. Um, and then this is a portfolio and I've begun setting it up for next year. And it's going to be a really great space for them to be able to do to do their portfolio. And what I'm able to do in this space um, is, is go in and see when I have all of my students assigned to this course, um, I'll be able to go in and see all of my students' portfolios in one place. Um, and it's a really easy platform for students to use. They have a collaborative space um, in which they can share information and things like that. So I'm a huge advocate of using OneNote to set student work um, um, because it's an easy place for me to go in and see exactly what it is um, they've been up to. So in terms of pedagogical benefits, um, I started using this platform really to support my students and to find more user ways and friendly ways for them to access information and work efficiently and effectively. I found from using Microsoft all of the programs really easy to use, especially once you've done the training, you can really learn some intricate parts. Pedagogically, I'm able to demonstrate fun, innovative and embodied ways of learning for my students that I hope when they go out into schools, they're able to do the same for their own students. So my main tip for anybody just going online or just starting to use these platforms is link up with somebody, find out who is using it, reach out to me, drop me a message, have a practice, invite some of your colleagues to your team so they can have a play and have a look at it. I've been really thankful and grateful. I've got a couple of colleagues that I do this with, Hattie Campbell and Michael Cole, both from um, different areas of the university, and they're able to provide me with some critical feedback on some of the things that I do and we're able to learn from each other. So find your people at the university or outside of the university that can have a play. The second thing I always do is I ask a couple of students opinions on things. So at the moment I'm creating things for next year and I've been holding group 
uh, mini group seminars with current students of this year and getting their feedback on on how it should look and what it should look like for next year. And lastly, be open to changing what you're doing um, and adapting what you're doing um, to suit your students. I really like the use of Polly. I'm able to do a quick survey. For example, um, what did you think about today's lecture or today's seminar and gain instant feedback on how to make it better for next time for my students. So incorporate their voice, use their voice to change your practice to be better for them. Thank you. Bye.